Hey guys, so I've got something else to show you. It is this, which is upside down. It is a decade, oh, it's kind of heavy. It's a decade condenser by Muirhead. Now, this is quite a, a well-known company for these kind of things. Um, this comes from around, I mean, it can, I don't know the date, I haven't opened it yet, and I don't know if it'll say inside, but it can come from the mid 50s up until around uh, the mid 60s so we'll see if we can find any kind of date code in here but I don't know if we will it's a beautiful bit of kit it's got these huge dials on the front and essentially what it is it's a variable capacitor uh, and it's a microfarad capacitor so we'll be able to see what kind of values we'll give it a test um, I don't know whether it will be anywhere near accurate after all this time and we'll also open it up and have a look what's inside uh, it's not something I imagine I'll use. I might mod it a little bit so it does other things because it is beautiful. I mean, it's uh, it's got this dovetailed wood box that it's in. No other real markings on here, uh, apart from made in England. So let's have a look at it a bit more closely. So we've got it here set to zero at the moment. So it actually shouldn't be giving us really anything apart from this residual uh, capacitance that we've got but actually I'm reading uh, 0.2 nanofarad so that actually might be roughly equivalent to that I'm not sure I'll have to look it up and find out how far the zeros go down uh, if I switch it up to one on the tenths bit let's have a look we get 100 nanofarads we should be expecting to see 200 nanofarads actually this is pretty close uh, 300 nanofarads again it's pretty close so if we jump up one more um, let's go on to the hundreds so we're into the microfarad range now so if I just take this down to zero we'll see that uh, we've got uh, 10 nanofarads should be 20 we've got a bit of 20.2 um, there we've got 30.2 40.2, 50.2. So that's that's working. Let's jump up into um, the thousandths. So we've got 1.2 nanofarads on there. We've got roughly, well, you okay there? Yeah, we go. 2.2, 3.2. This one doesn't seem to be working. Maybe if we just wiggle it a little bit. There we go. I don't think the contacts are working properly there. Um, five, six. Again, seven's not working. Let's just wiggle it a little bit. There we go. Eight. And let it settle. There we go. Nine and ten. And give it a chance to get there. There we go. So we've got some contact issues, it seems, there. There we go, that's just working. If I hold the hold the dial properly, so we've got 10.2. So actually, it does work quite well. Um, I mean, it's certainly not very accurate, but uh, it, it is showing, uh, see, this is now not, not touching at all. So that's our 0 0.2, we're getting was residual current, uh, residual capacitance there. Let's open it up and see what's inside. There we go. This has definitely never been opened, I'm sure of it. It uh, has been sat in storage for many, many, many years. So it's got this black Bakelite front, I guess. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch all of it. Right, we're in. Or at least I think we are. I've unscrewed all of the screws on here, so let's try and lift it out. Ooh, it's 
very heavy. I thought the, uh, although we've got a grounding wire to the case, to a big copper back plate there. Wow, I did not know what to expect when I opened this. Uh, not that. <laughs> it's completely encased. Wow, that is amazing construction. I'm very impressed. So we've got a copper backplate here. In fact, it runs down the side. You'll see it's, there's a, a wire soldered there to the, to the case here. Uh, being a wooden case, I wouldn't expect it needed that, but there it is all the same. I guess there are some nails in there somewhere that are are then earthed. So it'll take AC as well as it'll take DC, I guess, is th if that's what it means. I'm not entirely sure. Let's uh, see. I can't show you an awful lot here. So we've got our dials uh, which attach to these. So if I turn one of these, it should turn this back part here. And you can see these, we've got three layers, three little bars, which are the contacts and they're moving from contact to contact and you'll notice that they are continuous so when it moves from one contact it moves over to the other one but still touches until it's in the correct position. Now I noticed on a couple of these that the contacts weren't working very well and I can see some kind of uh, sort of dark mess on some of these so maybe the contacts aren't working too well. It'd be great to see inside these but I don't really want to take it apart because it is very heavy and I'm not entirely sure about the construction. I mean, it is immense. Well, that is slightly disappointing that I can't get into that. I've looked uh, at all the different ways that I might be able to uh, undo it all. I could take these off, but then I wouldn't be sure about putting them back together. They're also sort of glued in place. Now there are some screws to take this top plate off, but then again, I'd have to take all of these screws out and risk ruining the whole of, the whole of construction really. So I can't go any further with this, but it, it is a beautiful device. Uh, if anyone's got any information about um, Muirhead or, or what's actually inside these, uh, these dials, I assume that it is uh, lots and lots of different plates potentially in here, but I don't know. Uh, if anyone's got some information, I'd love to hear it. So for now, I think this is gonna go back together and uh, It'll sit on my shelf until I really understand what's going on with it. But isn't it a beautiful piece of kit? It really is. Just this plastic here, whether it's, it's Bakelite or plastic, I'm not sure, but it, it's lovely.